With input prices escalating and food shortages throughout the world, canola farmers are on a quest for better yields. The quest for the canola crown. Through in-crop management and advancing agronomy practices, several of the most unique farmers from across Canada are reaching for record-breaking yields, even while facing the tough growing conditions of the true north. To achieve higher yields, farmers must know what's going on inside their plants. The canola whisperer, Rick DeJong, is on the job. This whole sap testing thing, it intrigues me. I mean, if I can have a snapshot of what my crop is doing, Today. That's huge, right? Not, Absolutely. Not a tissue sample or a yield sample. We want to focus just on that true sap that's flowing through that leaf that can move around in support of the crop. To me, if I can spot and address those nutrient deficiencies on potassium and nitrogen and phosphorus before they actually happen. Oh yeah, no, it's way easier to fix before you see the problem than it is to I, fix the problem. Yeah, and definitely. we can do that. So why am not I hearing a whole bunch of hype about sap testing? I mean, you're excited about sap testing, I'm excited about sap testing. They've been trying to figure out sap analysis for decades, um, but it came from industry instead of academia. So academia has indeed been a bit slow to, to hop on the bandwagon with it, and they want to see it standardized. Um, but the problem is, not every lab knows how to do it. Right. Uh, so far, I'm only aware of the one lab in the world that's able to do a consistent, accurate sap analysis. Because there's a lot of technique and protocol into how to get the sap out of the leaf without rupturing a whole bunch of cell wall structure. So you're telling me it's not as simple as just taking a canola plant, stepping on it, taking the juice? That's and exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> well, hey, garlic press. I think guys, oh, they're doing the garlic press. I'm gonna do this, I got the garlic press. And interestingly enough, that's how this started. Guys were out with the garlic presses in the fields, pulling sap, using a garlic press, getting those drips out and measuring those drips. And that's the problem with a leaf tissue sample that, we know, that we've done historically. When you sample that leaf tissue, you're getting the entire leaf, yeah. including what's on it, by the way, and then eight, roughly 80% of that sample is leaf dry matter. Yeah. Well, that's nutrition that's tied up. It's yeah. kind of going oh, no. back, right? I, I agree with you. I want to look at what's going yeah. on today. Yeah. We're taking the leaves, no petioles, no stems, just the leaves. Yeah. And we are taking an old leaf and a young leaf. So, boom. There's your, there's, there's, your old leaf. there's your old leaf. You want something fully expanded, so that's not, right? But you get down to about here or here, I could take either one. Okay. I, I so could that's... argue either or. Yeah. So there's your, there's, there's, there's your young leaf. There's your old. A little gray. Yep. Kind of like some of the rest of us. You got it. Yeah. So yeah, I want to walk out here a bit. The crop is always trying to regulate that new growth. Right. And if it needs, say, potassium or nitrogen, which is mobile, it can pull it out of those old leaves. So if we're doing sap sampling of those two separately, we can now see those reserves of those mobile nutrients much clearer. This crop nutrition is all about nutritional balance. Yeah. And when we achieve that balance, we end up with healthier crops. And by the way, healthier crops mean less diseases and less insects. Yeah. And that's what the sap is helping us do. It's helping us see those nutrient interactions better than ever before. And when you combine that with the soil sample, we still have to rely on more than just the sap. Oh yeah. You combine that to your soil sample and to what you're visually seeing in the field, we now get a much more complete picture on the crop nutrition and what actually is truly needed. I'm obviously not even going to be pulling plants up when I do this, right? I mean, I'm going to be going down here. I'd probably be grabbing either that one um, or something like that. Yeah. There's my old. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be looking on the old. You're going to be looking probably for around 50 leaves. I want that Ziploc relatively full. Yeah. So if you've got to add an extra 10 leaves to it, don't be shy. Yeah. And then on the, on the young leaf, you know, that one's not opened yet, but this one is open. I'd take that one. So... So open being flat. Yeah. I, well, I want it. Yeah, I want it somewhat expanded. Yeah. So I would take that as my young leaf. This is looking great. I'm. These are. You've got a good stand here. 
Um, sometimes you get lucky. <laughs> uh, sometimes the good Lord gives you what you need. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> the terrain makes us all better farmers. Right? Absolutely. So we always have a benchmark that we know we're trying to get, which is neat. So we can go in now at any point in time, know where the benchmark is, and how we're, we can measure against that benchmark, are we there or not? And as yields go up, we'll see that we're not meeting, we need to go a little bit further here, or a little right. bit lower there to meet them because the optimum range is still the same, but because of the higher yield, we now need more input to get into that optimum range. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see where the magnesium and iron are. If we can meet these leaves a little darker, we're gonna have more sugars. This crop is gonna have more food to produce more into this, right? Because mm -hmm. this is where the money's at. You know, and as I'm looking at these leaves, um, I'm actually, I mean, you were saying you're, you're not seeing a lot of disease and insect pressure this year. Um, you got good moisture. You're getting good nutrient uptake at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And I suspect from what I'm seeing here, things look good, but we do have a little bit of a halo here. What's going on? Well, yeah, is it just mature? Exactly, exactly. Well, we don't need to guess. I want to learn. I want to be open-minded. I, I want to share my knowledge. And if you have knowledge I can glean, that makes me better too, right? Yeah. Oh, exactly. I'm biased to act. Okay, I believe we have some of the best products on the market if you use them right and accordingly. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of other good fertilizer products out there as well. And if I can help you do better. Because I mean, there's never just yes. one single thing, otherwise we'd all do it, right? If it was just buying a planter, all the farmers would have a planter. Here's your secret bullet, yeah. no such thing. No, it's like 20 different things. Maybe I, because I didn't, you know, put heat on my, with my Roundup last year, my canola, my peas are dirty this spring, so. The, 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 the trick really is to take advantage of all those tools in the belt. Well, if I can test it and then stay ahead of the curve, I mean, that is, that, right. that's exactly what we've all been trying to achieve for the last 40 years. It's all the little things you do. It's never one big thing. As much as people like to think that you could, uh, there was one thing that you could go out there and do. <laughs> Doesn't I've exist. Never, I've never found it. No. The silver But I haven't been farming very long, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, I'm still looking for that magic silver bullet. Yeah, I haven't too. found it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's doing all the little things right over time. Yeah. And then having Mother Nature work with you. Yeah. Yeah, this is my 42nd crop. 42nd? Yeah. Good for you. I mean, you think you're much older than that. <laughs> I wish. I say, you started at two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How come you never say that to me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's living up here in the northern air. That's what that's it is. Yeah, it. you need that's to spend more time there up you here. There you go. Well, you've fishing got, like that. I was about to say, you got fishing up here, you've got hunting. You know, that, that might be a, a good motivation, man. So, three weeks ago, we flew into a lake in northern Alberta. Yep. Like right on the Northwest Territories border. Oh. And we're catching pickerel, like six pound pickerel, oh. every cast, right? Drooling on that one. So you're, again, you know, you get tired of fishing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, your arms are tired, right? I don't have no idea what you're talking about, but I'll, I'll agree with you. So I laid my fishing rod, my, Pam had sent a sandwich with me. Yep. So I laid my fishing rod across the front of the boat where I was sitting, and the hook was hanging in the water maybe six inches. And I caught two more pickerel by the time I finished my sandwich. Without casting. With, just sitting there? Yeah, just sitting there. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> yeah, we just rope them. I'm gonna cry now.